from Puns Up Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. So I am in the Pacific Northwest and right now you guys, as I'm videoing this, it is snowing like crazy here. We are in a winter wonderland. And it's that time of year and it's time to take down all of the Christmas decorations. And I've got the beautiful wreath that we made a few weeks ago hanging right outside my door. And I thought, you know what? Why not replace it with a really nice welcome sign? So this week, we are gonna work on a welcome door sign. But hey, before we get there, you guys, thanks so much for joining me. And if this is your first time stopping by my channel, make sure you click on that subscribe button and click on the bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. I try to do it every Friday. That's why we call it Inspiration Friday. And hey, if you're one of my faithful followers, thanks so much for stopping by again today. And I love to hear your guys' comments. So if you've got any comments on this project or ideas for other projects, make sure you drop them below. So let's go ahead and get started right away. So I don't know about you guys, but I love hitting the after Christmas sales. And this year I picked up these rounds at Walmart. So it says Merry Christmas and it's got a really cute welcome on the other side. So it was in the Christmas section, so it was 50% off. So the price tag is $16.98, so basically $17 and I got it for half price. So this is a 20 inch round and we're gonna remake this and we're gonna make it into a really great welcome sign. So a couple of the first things that I like to do whenever I'm working on this is one, we need to get the, um, the greenery removed that we've got on here. And I just grabbed some needle nose pliers and I'm just gonna pull it off. It's actually just hooked on with staples and I may use that greenery again. I'm just not quite sure, um, but Let's go ahead and get those staples pulled out. And there we go, we got that done. Now this one has already got rope on it, okay? And I'm gonna see if I can save this rope because I really like the idea of hanging my sign that way. Now, if your round doesn't have um, holes in it already, you can definitely drill holes, okay? But there we are. Now we've got the greenery all removed We've got the, um, the rope removed and we're ready to go. Not sure if you guys can hear some commotion outside, but right outside my window, my husband has decided this is the time to plow our driveway to get rid of some of the snow. So hopefully you can't hear that. Okay, so let's get going on this. The next thing we're gonna do, you guys, is I grab my sander and I wanna give this a good sand. We're gonna paint both the front and the back of this sign, but first I wanna rough it up a little bit so I can get a good coat of paint on it, okay? So I'm gonna fast forward through this, you guys, but we're just gonna give it a good sand job, front and back. right behind me and we're just going to give it a good dusting off okay so it didn't take all the design off but it definitely roughed it up some and the reason why I like to rough it up some is it just lets the next coat of paint adhere a little bit better okay so now what I'm going to do is I am going to give this a base coat of chalk paint Okay, and so I like to use Rust-Oleum paint, okay? I like to use Dixie Belle also, but I happen to have this Rust-Oleum chalk paint on hand. And so I'm gonna be using linen white, and I'm gonna be using a coastal blue, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with the linen white, okay? And we're gonna give it a nice coat all the way across one side then we're gonna let it dry really, really well. 
Okay, and I'm just gonna grab a stick to mix this up a little bit because I have not used this paint in a while. Always a good idea to make sure your paint is mixed up really well. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix that up. Now you guys, I have already put together a stencil that we're gonna be using later. And I did that with my Cricut, okay? And I'm just gonna be doing welcome on it. Kind of like what it already has here, but we're just gonna change it up, okay? So I'm just gonna give this a good coat and I'm probably gonna need a second coat on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the whole thing, okay? I'm gonna do front and back. We're gonna let it completely dry, okay? And like I say, I'll most likely give it a second coat. We're gonna let it completely dry and then I am going to do a split and do half of the round with the coastal blue, okay? Um, and we're gonna, and then we're going to add the stencil. So a couple steps here on this sign, okay? Just gonna kind of get it all covered right now. So I just definitely is gonna need that second coat, you guys. There's no doubt about it, okay? But that's no problem. We're gonna let this one dry completely, okay? I'll give it a second coat and we'll do the other side also and I'll meet you back after I've got this all painted. Okay, so we've got a full coat on and now what I wanna do is I want to put a line of um, the coastal blue down below. So I am just going to tape off and I'm just ballparking where I want to do this at, okay? I'm just going to go just like that, okay? So my white's nice and dry, okay? Now, to be able to make sure this is a nice crisp line, I'm just gonna take a little bit of my white, okay? And I'm gonna go across that line, okay? Just going to go across it. And then I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna speed it up a little bit, you guys with my hair dryer. Okay, now that that's dry, we are going to add a coat of our Coastal Blue on, okay? And when I get all done, you guys, I wanna show you this cool little thing my husband got me that I've got my round on now and it is a little Lazy Susan. And I got it for Christmas. I had it in my Amazon um, basket and I just hadn't pulled the trigger to go ahead and get it. And my husband saw it there and he bought it for me. And I used to use just a Lazy Susan that I had picked up at the secondhand store, which works great too. But this one is plastic and it's made just for this. So I just really like it. Now I like to do a continuous um, brush stroke so that, um, you know, get it on and then do a nice continuous brush across. Okay, and that way we're getting a good even coat of our coastal blue on. Okay, and make sure you get those edges too. Got the top edge is all white and then we've got our coastal blue on. Okay. And you guys could just stress this if you want it. So see, I'm just, now I've got all my paint on, I'm just going across, and I'm just getting an even coat all the way across. Okay, I'm gonna give it a shot with my hair dryer, okay? And then They don't last very long. Definitely are more disposable than anything. I can feel this one wanting to give on me already. Okay, had a good 
good nice coat going all the way across. I am going to distress this on the edges so we are going to see a little bit of that white come through which is the whole point of distressing. But for now I think we're pretty good. Okay oops one little those full strokes I'll tell you sometimes I got something in my paint right there. Let me get it out. Got something right here too. Okay, I'm gonna hit this baby with my hair dryer. Gotta stop playing with it, Lisa. That's what I can do sometimes, just playing with it. Hit it with my hair dryer. Okay, let's see how our edge looks, you guys. I always love this part. Look at that. Oh, crisp as crisp can be. That layer of white just really helped us out, you guys. Oops, got that right in my paint can. Ah! Dang, tape's hooking to everything. <laughs> okay. Get rid of that. Get my hands wiped off. And then what we're going to do, you guys, is going to do now is we are going to put we're going to let this dry tool okay so we're back we have got a completely dry board we've got it dry on the top and we've got it dry on the bottom very key to this project you guys make sure you give it time to dry because our next step we're going to do is we're going to add on the stencil and that stencil really needs to be adhered to dry paint okay so i have my cutting board down below and i like to use my cutting boards whenever i'm putting on a stencil so that i can make sure i'm putting it on centered just right so i've already weeded out my stencil and i cut this out with my cricut and i'm using um, frisco craft um, stencil paper which i picked up off of amazon one of the things that I like to do first is find the middle of my design and all I do is just pinch it with my fingers top and bottom okay so I know exactly where I'm at I've got my mat here and I've got it lined up and so my line going across is at 11 so I know that I'm completely straight going this way I know I have a 20 inch um, um, board or round and so my middle of my board is going to be right at 11. So I can eyeball right about where I'm going to be. Okay so I am going to put it right about there. I might come up just a tad bit. Okay so now when I'm adding on a stencil a lot like I would do if I was adding on vinyl is sometimes you fight to get it all on straight the first time. And so what I like to do is use my mat to get it just where I want it, okay? And then I'm only gonna adhere half of it at a time, okay? Now what I should have done, and I didn't do you guys, and I'm gonna do it really quick here, is I need to trim up my stencil. So let me just do that really quick here because I want my tape to come all the way down to the bottom of my board, okay? So there, now I know that I've got this nice and straight. And so I'm just straightening it out. I'm right at my 11, I'm right straight there. And I'm just going to put this down, okay? And of course, Lisa has to have a piece of tape that decided to go crazy on it. So let's just add another piece of tape. We're going to make sure we have that on nice and straight, okay? This is the trick to using the board underneath, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel the back of my stencil paper away. 
the inside of some of my letters are not going to come right away and so we'll add those on after the fact okay but what i'm doing is i am going to get my transfer started okay so now i can go back and i can very carefully place that letter okay and i know now that I've got it down nice, okay? And I can take that tape off and I can adhere the rest of my stencil. And that way, I don't take the chance of getting it knotted up or ripped or out of place at all, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is very carefully just start removing the backing, okay? And as I said, like that part of that E, it's not gonna be ready to lay yet, okay? And I just like to do a couple letters at a time, okay? And I'm just gonna trim as I go. Okay? Then what I'll do is I'll come back over and I'll just start to lay that down, okay? Getting it all nice and in place. We'll go back in and add in the parts of the E and the part of the O as soon as we get this all done. There's another E here that I'm going to have a little piece on. So I'm just going to pull those off to the side. Easy as that. Okay, and now I can take all of my stencil and I know that I've got it laid out all nice and straight. Okay. And I can just put it down as I go. Okay, and it's all nice and straight up top. And we're just going to add in our E pieces. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give this a coating of our blue again. We're going to let it completely dry and then we're going to add a coating of white over the top. Use that same trick that we used before when we um, did our nice crisp line, okay? So I just want to make sure that I've got my stencil all down nice, okay? No air pockets. Okay, so we're all good there. Let's get rid of this garbage. Okay, I'm going to take my blue, where is it at, Lisa? And I'm just going to put a coating of blue over the top of it, and we will take our hair dryer to it, and we'll give it a quick dry, okay? I'm just going to do a coating of blue over it again, and this blue is just going to help seal those edges, okay? Because we want our um, welcome to be nice and crisp with our white edges, okay? hair there and I'm going to try to get picked up. There we go. Okay. I've got my hair dryer. I don't think I have it plugged in. I get plugged in here. Okay, we've got that all dry. So now what we're gonna do is I like using these little sponge brushes whenever I'm doing a stencil, okay? And so we're gonna go ahead and open up our white again, okay? And we are just going to sponge it on, okay? Dab it on, okay? 
keep my leftover here so I can just get some of the excess off. And I'm going to do more than one coat, okay? And I'm just lightly sponging it, you guys. Okay, so we are gonna let that dry. We're gonna wanna add a second coat here. But while that's drying, I'm gonna put this off to the side and we are gonna to put together a bow, okay? So Lisa has never claimed to be a bow maker, let me tell you. So what I have discovered is zip ties really help out with making bows. So what I'm gonna do is I just grabbed some of this buffalo plaid that I just love and I'm going to start making some loops. Okay, I'm gonna start with the biggest one first. Okay, and then I'm just going to make a smaller one, a little bit smaller on top, okay? And then a little bit smaller after that until I run out of my ribbon that I've got here. Okay. And there we go, okay? Easy as that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrunch them all together, okay? I'm gonna take my zip ties, and these are just little miniature zip ties, you guys. I love them. My husband picks them up for me at Harbor Freight, and they just work great. I just pull this guy tight. I wanna make sure it's in the middle good. Okay. Pull it tight a little bit soon. <laughs> um, but I just get that nice and tight, okay? Then I'm gonna grab my scissors. I'm gonna clip that off. And then you can just start to open that bow up, okay? And it's easy as that. Like I say, Lisa's never claimed to be a bow maker. But these zip ties, I think, are just a great way to put together a bow, okay? You can pull these out a little bit. You can just kind of play with it. And we'll play with it more once we get it on the, um, the round but I thought while that was drying, I could show you how easy it is to make these bows, okay? And then what I'll do is I've got another piece I had already cut and I'm going to use it as the tail, okay? So I'll just add that. We'll play with that bow a little bit once we add him to our round, okay? So we've got the, that going. I've got my, um, I've got my heat gun, my heat gun, my glue gun warming up, okay? We're gonna give one more coat of the white paint here, and then we're gonna pull this stencil off, and we are gonna hope that this is a su successful project, okay? Okay, there we are. We've got that all ready. Get my paint's out of the way. Okay. We are going to pull off our stencil.
voila. So far, so good, you guys. Got those little pieces I need to bring up. It's in the middle of the E. Get those pulled up. Voila. Oh, it's looking good, you guys. Get that one out of my hand. Sometimes it's kind of hard to see where it's at. I have to touch that up just a tad bit. And there we have it. How exciting. Look at that, you guys. There is my welcome. Oh, I'm so excited. And I'm just going to grab a little tiny paintbrush here and just barely touch up this E. Other than that, I think we've got a great sign. Perfect. Okay, let's got my let's give this a little dry. Okay, we are all nice and dry, you guys. So look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is I've got my glue gun all heated up. I've got my bow and I've got some greens and I've got the rope that we did have, okay? And so what we're going to do is we are going to add our greens at the top. So I'm gonna turn this around, kind of looking at it upside down a little bit, you guys, okay? But I'm gonna put my greens first on there and so I have my glue gun ready to go. And so I think, I think I just want to go something like, something like that. Thinking though, I'm going to split my greens. Whoops. So that way we've got the same on each side. Okay. So got a little bit of that one there. Okay, got a little bit of this one here. And then we're going to put some of this down, put some of this down. Okay, I like it. I like it, you guys. We're just going to play with it here. Got my glue gun all ready to go. So I'm going to add some glue in here to get this in place. Being generous with my glue, you guys. Our bow is going to cover this all up anyway. Okay. Love that my glue gun is cordless. That works out so nice. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I've got that bow we made, right? But first, we're going to put down our tails. We put those. Okay, so we've got our tails down on our bow. So see how we've got that so far. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to play with this just a little bit. I want to fluff this up some. Okay, like I said, you guys have never claimed to be a big bow maker, but it's amazing how these can turn out. This wired is the best. Okay, so I'm going to add a bunch more glue in there. think and this turned out so cute so excited with how good it's turning out sometimes it can be a challenge when you're working with these kind of things okay and I think remember that green where we took off at the very beginning I think I'm gonna add that back in okay so I'm gonna add a little bit more glue back here in the back in there 
Maybe put it underneath. I think it would look prettier underneath. Just kind of fills it in a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to do a little bit more right here. Okay. You guys, we're going to add our rope back in. Remember that rope we took off at the very beginning? Okay. I'm going to feed it through. You know what? A trick I always learn when you want to get rope through. Just take a little piece of tape. And tape around it. That way I can get it through that hole again. Look at that, goes right through. And you feed it back up through the hole. Sorry, you guys aren't seeing this part. And fed it right back up through the hole. I'm gonna take the tape off. Tie my knot back. And you know what, you guys? We have got a welcome door sign all done. What do you guys think? I just love how we change it. I'll make sure I show you a picture of remember what it looked like before and now what it looks like now. Can't wait to put it on my door. I'll make sure I give you a close up view of it too. Thanks for joining me for another Inspiration Friday. And hey, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I'd love to hear your comments. And if you have ideas for other projects, make sure you let me know. Thanks again for joining me. See you next week.